Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I warmly welcome all of you. A uh, special warm welcome for our representative for from Polish Embassy in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, uh, and uh, welcome all of you who are here on site and uh, all of you who are uh, online. Uh, our lightning talk is system thinking approach to the development of effective, interoperable and inclusive digital government. At the beginning, uh, I would like to present ourselves. My name is uh, Mariusz Przybyszewski and this is my colleague Michał Bukowski. We both uh, represent Poland, uh, the Chancellor of the Prime Minister of Poland, previous IGF forum was organized in our country, in Katowice city. So maybe some of you had this opportunity to participate last year uh, and know our country. If not, I strongly uh, encourage you to visit and invite you. Uh, we both are experienced uh, specialists in the field of digitalization of public administration, uh, recently enterprise architecture. Uh, for both of us, it's more than 15 years of experience in this field. So, some uh, organizational introduction about the lightning talk. My colleague is going to present the topic uh, and the view from our Polish uh, governmental perspective. Uh, afterwards, we will start the Q&A session uh, when you can share your opinion or ask uh, any questions. Uh, and naturally, I encourage you to do so. And no matter if you are online or you are on site, you are going to have the equal opportunity to participate uh, in this element. Uh, we have also uh, prepared uh, to use some interactive uh, during the, the presentation and I, and I encourage you to participate as well. So, uh, for now, a very quick introduction to the topic before I will pass the floor to my colleague. Apart from the title, which I have already read, uh, there is a subtitle, uh, which is how architecting the government has enhanced digital access to government service for short, sustainable and common future. And in our presentation, we'd like to address several issues, and they are the following. What should be the approach to the development of digital government? How it address different dimensions of sustainability? We are going to show how to tackle the complexity of public administration. Uh, explanation of system thinking method and its benefits for citizen and administration. Uh, we will also mention about digital government layers. And finally, how this practice uh, builds inclusive administration and more efficient digital government at the same time. So now I will uh, move to moderate the online part and give a floor to my colleague Michał Bukowski to give a presentation. Now I'd like to share a screen. I, share, I just share the screen so I see that the presentation is on. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to present system thinking approach to the development of effective, interoperable and inclusive digital government. Let me begin. So this title is a little bit complicated, so I wanted to describe what's inside. So the most important element is digital government. Uh, uh, the idea of digital government is that it should be effective, nowadays inclusive and also interoperable. And uh, I will tell you during this presentation how to, uh, how to use systems thinking approach to the development of such a digital government. So let's start from the beginning. What is digital government? Of course, there are many definitions, but one of the definitions I like very much is that digital government is a service delivery between government and the public as well as within the government using information and communication technologies. Why service delivery? Because services provide value, value for the citizen, for the entrepreneur, 
for everybody and the value is the most important thing that the government could create. And if we think about the digital government, we have to take into account that uh, nowadays digital government is not only for the national area, but uh, from time to time, uh, or sometimes it's supranational. So we've got Poland, which is a part of the European Union, and we've got a supranational, national, regional, and local public administration, well, administration so which cooperate. Uh, with each other and when we think about the development of the digital government in one country, for example in Poland, we have also to take into account the directions or the regulations from the European Union. And as I said, the public administration supports digital government. So now you see the very complex and, and big uh, definition of what is the public administration's administration by the Polish uh, professor, but as I usually do, I decompose it into the more um, perceivable di diagram. So this definition says that the administration, public administration, is a system which consists of people who follow, set and follow some goals. They do perform some tasks to achieve these goals and these tasks are um, defined in the law. The people and organizations use authority and use also material and technical means to do these tasks and achieve goals. But what is important that the public administration is system. And this system and the digital government should be of course effective. Effective which means able to reach the goals but at the same time it should be efficient when long-term benefits are greater than efforts including costs. And also the modern digital government should be interoperable, which means it's capable of effective cooperation, but cooperation between organizations, between people, between regulations, processes, data applications and infrastructure. And digital, modern digital government should be also inclusive, so providing equal opportunity for individuals and groups to participate. And now we are coming to the topic of the systems thinking. Uh, before I say how to apply systems thinking to the digital government development, I would tell you, tell you what, is the, what the system thinking is. So it is the way of making sense of the complexity of the world. In our case, the complexity of digital government and public administration. As I mentioned in the previous slides, the public administration is a very complex system. So we are looking at the subject, in our case, the public administration in terms of holes and relationships, rather but then splitting it down into parts. Every complex system works on a synergy, so we have to take into the elements and the and the connections. So another from another point of view, when we think that the digital government serves the society, <clears throat> so it has to fulfill fulfill its needs. When we think about the holes, the but digital government have to fulfill the needs of the organizations, groups of people, but also of individuals. So, summing up, a system is a whole separated from the environment composed of elements that are directly or indirectly related to each other. And on this diagram you see there is a system which is a whole and inside we've got element one, element two and they are interconnected. And how it apply to the public administration? And now we come to the, uh, to the question, how architecting the government helps enhance digital access to government services for a shared, sustainable and common future? Public administration, as I tried to present in the previous slides, is a very complex system. It has elements which belong to the cultural, legal, organizational, semantic and technical layers. So the best way to understand the system and address its challenges is to use systems thinking method presented in the previous slides. In Poland, we use government enterprise architecture, which is system thinking approach to public administration digital, trans digital transformation. And now let's look at the diagram. It's one of the examples we use uh, in real life in our uh, public administration development. So when, when we want to understand the complexity of the public administration, when we want to optimize and on the other hand when we want to communicate it to different stakeholders 
we use visual dry diagrams. For example, when we look from the bottom, we see the public entity, the organization, runs IT system which accesses the data in public registers. So these IT systems at public registers, on one hand, they have to meet requirements on the top from the Act on the Computerization Reg Regulations, but they could be in some specific domain, for example, health domain or finance domain, so they also have to meet requirements of the left-hand side from the domain interoperability framework, so specific requirements for, for a domain. And also it has to comply with the state information architecture. So on this picture, we've got organizations, we've got systems, we've got regulations, and also in the upper left corner, we've got some notion. There is a notion of interoperability of public administration. So government enterprise architecture used in Poland uses principles and visual models, as presented in a previous slide, which reflect Polish digital government organization and development. Principles and models lead to better understanding of digital government, which allow further reduction of administration complexity. They also contribute to increasing interoperability, reuse and effectiveness of the whole system of public administration. But also, they support all dimensions of sustainability. And now we are coming to the sub subject of sustainability. Sustainability is defined as a capacity to maintain or improve the state and availability of desirable materials or conditions over the long term. And usually the sustainability is defined as having three aspects, social sustainability, environmental and economic sustainability. And now I got a question to you. What is the most important aspect from point, your point of view? So you have the, the link to the Menti solution and where you can uh, vote for uh, three uh, possibilities. So I encourage you to click on the link. So let's wait for a while for the voting. Of course, every vote counts and nothing is bad, nothing is good if, if, if we come of a Okay, when we see, uh, we see some changes. Okay, right now we see that for, for a group, generally speaking, all aspects of uh, sustainability are equally valuable. Well, we'll come to be back to this later, and I, in the end of the presentation, I, I will show you the, the, the final effect. I'm coming to the, back to the presentation and to the aspects of sustainability. So I talked about three aspects and how architecting the government support dif different aspects of sustainability. First, social. When we provide a visually understandable information about the complex system of public administration, we inform citizens, we inform other organizations how the government, digital government is constructed and how it is going to be developed. So we are better serving and on the other hand, engaging citizens of the democratic society. They, have a, they could have a vote on it. There is another aspect, an environmental aspect. When we reduce the complexity of the uh, information technology system which support public tasks, we also reduce the number of the information technology systems or public registers required to fulfill the goals of the government. So there is a less expenditure in the electric energy, less pollution of the environment, so we've got, we've got a reducing the negative impact of an, on the environment, environment. And also, when there is a less uh, electronic devices and solu IT solutions required to, to achieve goals, we are having a lowering public expenditures. And we, in Poland, publish digital government principles and models, such as presented on this slide, on the Polish government website, to inform and engage all stakeholders. So you've got a screenshot from Polish website. So on one hand, within the government, we strongly advise policymakers to take into account the existing ICT landscape shown on these models. Uh, and also we involve 
stakeholders and to involve stakeholders, we publish digital government principles and models and run consultations based on disinformation and uh, encouragement to consultations. So it builds in more inclusive administration and more effective digital government at the same time. More information about this topic is presented on the IGF website. We provided the background paper and I thank you for the presentation. Thank you for your presentation, Michał. It was very inspiring. Now we will give the floor to our participants. Uh, those who are here on site and those who are online can, can ask a question by raising a hand or typing uh, your question or comment. So I encourage you to, to do so. Okay, there is one question. Do we have a third mic? No? Hi, uh, good afternoon. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, my name is Denis Susar. Uh, I am uh, working at the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs. Uh, my question is, uh, national level e-government services are important, uh, but also it's important at the city level. Uh, in, the, in the publication that we launch every other year, U United Nations e-government survey, we started looking at the cities uh, and specifically uh, the most populous city in each UN member state and Warsaw in your case. So I wanted to find out uh, how much of these ideas are also spread among the cities, municipalities in Poland. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the very interesting question. Uh, so the, the Warsaw city, the capital city of Poland you mentioned is uh, very good in providing effective electronic services. Uh, from our, it's uh, cities in Poland are, are run by public administration, but local administration, regional, local administration. Uh, this approach, government enterprise ar uh, um, architecture, started within the government administration several years ago, and it matured. So we incorporated uh, the requirements for the IT systems, for the IT solutions, to conform to the government enterprise architecture, but only to relation so far to the government projects. Our aim and our uh, um, our aim, I would say I, our aim, is to make a cascade of this government enterprise architecture from the strategic point of view. So from the point of view of the Minister of the Digitization of Poland through the whole government administration down to the local and regional administration. In the one of the first slides I showed the different, uh, different levels of the government. So right now the cities which are the, the, the local administration which run the city have their own approach. We are not harmonized it yet but we are preparing some legal acts and we are preparing some funding which will support government enterprise architecture through all the country. Thank you. Yes. I would like to add also to this question that uh, cities, as you have asked about, there's a self-government, so we cannot uh, order the, 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 the implementation directly, but we try to cooperate through the unions of those uh, cities or regions and its ongoing cooperation, so hopefully we will implement the architecture also in, uh, in uh, as my colleague said, in the local government cities, etc. So, any other question from on site? Yes. Uh, thank you very much. My name is uh, Declan Maguero. I work uh, as a strategist with the lawyers hub based off Nairobi, Kenya. And I have two questions. One is a bit related. Um, how do you apply, uh, you know, this digital government system in in a governments that have federal states? Uh, or autonomous systems. I think you've alluded to the element of cooperation, but if there are more ideas, it would be appreciated. Uh, secondly, how do you measure efficiency uh, of uh, digital government? Do you apply specific instruments uh, at given times? Okay. First, first the cooperation between uh, different levels. <clears throat> uh, in Poland, we, we've got national interoperability, interoperability flame framework which is about to be revised. 
and we would like to incorporate some of these government enterprise architecture requir requirements into this law. And this law is abiding for all levels of administration. So it will build the opportunity to uh, prepare the cascade of the government under uh, uh, administration architecture. And um, in Poland, we also have different type of public funding for the solutions, for the IT solutions. And when we take into account the government administration, there are strict processes for applying for uh, for a funding and uh, the proposal of the solutions are verified against the government enterprise architecture but as i mentioned in the first uh, in the first uh, when there was a first question the so far the public administration on the regional level and local level were not uh, tested against the conformance with the government and the price architecture. But uh, I mentioned funds and we are running, right now we are starting another round of funding from the European funds in the Poland. So uh, within the, this program uh, there are requirements for the conformance with the, with the general uh, strategic government enterprise architecture. It is very important because not only uh, local administration reuses some of the solutions provided by the central government to run its public tasks, but also also it builds their own solutions which have to be interoperable and do not duplicate the solutions of the uh, central government. And the second question was about the measurement of the effectiveness. So when we think about, when we, when we talk about the effectiveness of the digital administration in Poland, it's measured uh, for example, on the European level, there are uh, some, some assessments of, of uh, digital administration in Poland and comparison uh, to with, the, with other countries. And there is, a, there is a website run by the European Commission. It is called JoinUp. Uh, it's, you, you, everyone could find it. And there, there are uh, inf information about the maturity, maturity of the different aspects of every country, including Poland. And uh, also, when we think internally about the efficiency of such an approach, government enterprise architecture approach, we could measure it by the, uh, for example, by the reduction of the number of solutions required to, uh, to perform the public tasks. If we, for example, within the government enterprise architecture, provide a central solution for the uh, for the electronic documents that it is reused by many of the local administrations, we see that they do not have to spend money to buy or develop their own solutions. So it's comparable by the uh, as is and to be state of, uh, of uh, prepared solutions. Maybe I will extend also the, the reply for the first question because you have asked the federal states, which we don't have actually, we don't have federal, not the federal country, but the republic. So we have the self-government and uh, many of the uh, tasks of the uh, self-government is mm, uh, given by the government, but some of them it's not. Uh, they have the, uh, their own independence. So if you would like to mm, uh, follow some ideas of so strategy, which is not covered by the, by the law to, to do so by the, by the local government, we just cooperate and we encourage through different uh, advantages. The advantages are uh, finances, as, as my colleague said, and uh, some the best solutions, technical solutions, we can offer centrally and they can use it and follow also our, uh, our issues. Another question, okay. Thank you. I, I, I have another question this time at the national level. So the way uh, we measure a government at the United Nations is uh, looking at the portal, but also looking at the human capital, like if the people in Poland can use the online services, uh, and also the infrastructure, if there is sufficient infrastructure to access online services and use those. So I would like to learn more about uh, your views and your projects on that, not only for the for the gov.pl, but other uh, 
projects that you do to connect people or to increase their digital skills? Uh, that's my first question. And the second one is about the usage. Do you collect usage data about the services uh, that you deliver online? And from time to time, for example, every other year, do you reconsider that maybe some of the services are no more relevant? And what are the like most active services uh, now? It's like 10 questions <laughs> in one. But, but uh, those uh, questions uh, goes to some other responsibilities of our government, I would say. But we can we can Maybe share start with the some second some question. I yes. respond to the second question. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. Go, okay. go, go. So to the second question about the measurement of the public services on, available online. So there is a um, web analytics system connected to major public services, and data collected are not only taken into account internally in the, into the government and to evaluate the effectiveness of the services, uh, but also are available uh, online for the public. So we, we've got a special dedicated website which collects the data, uh, not only web analytical data, so the visitors, uh, the, the page views, etc., but also the, in, the internal information, so how many uh, electronic uh, service forms were applied to the government with if, if each case. So it's not only used for the optimization of services, but also it's made publicly available to anybody online. So it's related to the to the measurement. So regarding the, your reports, uh, the data you collected, I had the experience of providing those data in the, in the past. Uh, so uh, I have experienced also the situation where maybe the data you were uh, uh, given were, was not the, 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 the um, uh, institution uh, responsible for the, um, for the issues we were asked, but they were collected somewhere wrongly. However, we try to, um, uh, to make it better. Anyway, if you wish to, to receive some detailed information about projects, which are actually uh, not our issues, they are not uh, in our department, but they are located just next to us, so we can collect them and provide you uh, via email, there's no problem with that. I don't see any question uh, online. Is there any question? No, there is no, there is no, okay. there is no any so question. Maybe okay. you could check for the question and I could uh, respond, add something more to, to, to your question. Uh, we also, from our point of view, enterprise and architecture and interoperability, we see that the competences of, for example, of the public servants are key um, element to the development of the uh, systemic approach for the whole government. So right now we are preparing the draft of the new uh, interoperability framework, national interoperability framework, and we invited the department which is, uh, which is, um, which speciality are uh, the digital competences into the work so we could see if we um, set some requirements within the law for the public administration, how to address the development of human capability on the side of the government to be able to, uh, to, to, to uh, realize it with, this, with proper capabilities. So we, we also have a focus on it. Okay, still no questions online. Uh, if you have some last question, we can we can have it. If not, we are over time already. So, thank you very much uh, for your attendance, all of you, uh, on, online and uh, on site. Uh, all the information that are in background paper, which is available uh, at, the, at the IGF site, and I will provide you the, the specific information if you have asked. So, thank you very much. Thank you for coming.